What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, DFS, and sports betting home here on FakePigskin.com. I'm your host, Kyle Robert. You can follow me on Twitter at NotoriousKRO. With me once again, it's the real Bobby Adcock. What's up, Bobby? What's up, Kyle? Just uh, excited for uh, week week seven here now. Yeah. And um, I know I, I don't know if anyone looked on Twitter. Um, I had a really great week last week. I uh, I declared it Raiders week in DFS. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it was it went magically, right? But a great revenge spot for Marshawn Lynch. Amari Cooper did all kinds of things. Right. Um, or or the or the exact opposite happened. Either way. Yeah. So so you know I think I think I have. I may have the right recipe to get back on track this week, and I, I think I'm, I'm going to break one of my rules too. So we'll we'll talk about oh, it. I can't wait. Uh, it was uh, a pretty good week for me, I would say. My running backs, I just I, I'm done with Jordan Howard. I'm writing that guy off. He he just he I let, told you. You were right. You were right. You were right, and I was wrong. Uh, Tevin Coleman <laughs> keeps letting me down, and and then they decided to give 20 carries to uh, Peyton Barber instead of Ronald Jones. So um, oh. that was. That was something else, but uh, you know it was a it was a solid week overall. Uh, but whew, like you said, uh, there's a lot to get into this week. I I have some interesting names at all positions. Um, so with the fr- without further ado, let's jump in. Let's talk quarterback and let's talk about Joe Flacco, 5400 at home against New Orleans. Give me all the Joe Flacco this week. Well, you love, uh, you know, talking about on our our betting podcast. You you love Baltimore. I do. Um, and you love your you love some Joe Flacco. And, and look, that's that's fine. Uh, Fifty six hundred. I think they're such a balanced team. You know, they they don't like they don't do one thing or another like completely like uh, emphasize one thing um, in part of the field. So I I, I mean I look I like the pick, but what about what about Mitchell Trubisky at 5,600. Uh, I think that is also another one that, uh, and we kind of talked about, it's funny how our DFS and sports betting uh, podcast kind of kind of mesh. Because uh, I think that's another one. We uh, You obviously like the Bears. I like the Bears. Uh, this Patriots defense is not good. Uh, I, and, you know, if we assume um, that the Bears are going to have to throw a little bit to stay in this game, um, I, I think I think Trubisky is definitely an interesting name. I think he's a guy that I, I do like. Um, I just I don't know Flacco at fifty four hundred. Um, I, I think the the reason I lean that way a little bit more is I think the Saints rush defense is actually pretty solid. And obviously Alex Collins hasn't been what I thought he would. And uh, you know Buck Allen's had his moments, but that de- the secondary is so bad that I think they'll end up kind of leading on the pass a lot more than you expect and uh you know i expect you know a a 300 yard passing day a couple touchdowns um and at 5400 i think it's i think it's an interesting way to look um okay kyle then i think this is an interesting point then i don't want to get too graphic but let's say i have like an iron like hot poker i'm putting in the fire okay Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna say Listen, I'm going to. You're gonna to have to. I'm gonna put this in your mouth. If if one of the other scores less than what you want, so you have to pick Trubisky or Flacco for the hot poker. Who, who are you picking? I'm picking Flacco. And I'm okay, prob- I'm, t- and I'm, I'm gonna I, pick I, Trubisky. So I'm we'll, probably we'll- gonna hate it the whole entire time, but uh, I just I feel like this is the week. I feel like he's gonna have a really good game. Um, you know, he's had. And it's interesting because Flacco's actually been good this year. Like he obviously, you know, hasn't been like Hall of Famer, but like he had 376 yards and two touchdowns at the Bengals. He had 363 and two touchdowns at Pittsburgh. He had almost 300 against the tight or against the Browns. Um, you know, he had three touchdowns in Week One versus Buffalo. Like he's had moments where you think, wow, this guy, and, and obviously having Michael Crabtree and John Brown and Willie Sneed makes things a lot easier when you're looking uh, to play a quarterback. So um, I think Flacco is a guy that I'm definitely interested in. Okay, Flacco versus Trubisky for the hot yeah. poker. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and no, um, I think there's been a lot of talk about uh, a contract here for Mr. Flacco. And I mm-hmm. think, and also drafting... Um, 
What's his name? Yeah, um, Lamar Jackson put a little hot poker yeah. on uh, on Flacco's butt to actually be solid, so he can hold his job all year. I, I think I think Mr. Flacco, I think he's going okay. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. I'll, um, I think I'm gonna play some football now. So yeah, no. Uh, g- g- we'll we'll see. I, I like I like the pick. Uh, we'll we'll see who gets up there. Is there anyone? Is there anyone you're paying up for, or you you feel uh, the need to pay? Up? I'm good with Jared Goff. The, the, you know, if if we're we're talking mainly the Sunday slate. I think if yeah. you're playing, if you're playing just the Sunday, so I think Goff at 6600 um, is is worth taking a shot on. Obviously, the Rams have shown the uh, kind of willingness to to have games where they really lean on Todd Gurley, and, and Goff doesn't throw quite as much. Um, but you know, obviously, Brandon Cook should be there. We'll see about Cooper Cup. Uh, Robert Woods is a stud. Um, I think Goff has a, has a get right game after kind of not doing a whole lot a week ago, um, and and I watched this Niners secondary out in person. They're not good. They have too many mental errors. They get beat over the top far too much. Um, but I think the Niners offense is good enough that will force Goff to throw a little bit more uh, than maybe you expect. And I, I think he has a solid game here. And if I'm spinning up at the position, that's where I'm looking. All right. Yeah. Um. I'm. I'm to- totally fine with that. I. I. I mean. Yeah. I, I don't think you can go wrong with golf with with the Niners. Um. Uh. I, I. I think. I think that might end it for me though, as far as spending. Well, what you would consider to be up. I mean, really, yeah. the price ranges don't really go that deep with the quarterbacks. I mean, right away the the, the fifth or sixth quarterback is. Well, God, the. I think the. Eighth quarterback is Baker Mayfield at 5,800. So, yeah, um, I don't think there's a big need to spend there. So let's uh, let's jump to running backs. What are you seeing there? Well, I have one more name I want to throw out there before we jump to running backs, really quick. Um, yeah. This might make you uh, like question doing this show with me. Um, this might make you question my sanity. This might make you think that I need to be locked up in a padded room. Uh, but I do not hate. Derek Anderson Anderson. (laughs) at $4,300. Um, And we'll talk stacks and wide receivers here in a minute. Uh, But Kelvin Benjamin and Derek Anderson have played together. This is a a duo that has seen, uh, had had time played in Carolina. uh, In in the two games in 2014 when Derek Anderson started uh, for Carolina, Benjamin went six for 92 in a touchdown and eight for 104. Um, you know, I, I think the Colts defense is trash. I think uh, that the Bills will be able to move the ball. And if you really want to go cheap at quarterback and spend up elsewhere, uh, I don't hate playing Derek Anderson this week. Well, I mean, you know, considering the the millionaire uh, winner had Brock Osweiler and Albert Wilson, I think, is his, yep. is his stack last week. No, it's 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 not crazy, and I think this is look. This is what if you're playing like GPPs, you have to do this stuff sometimes, yep. and you have you have to you have to look for edges. And um, you know, we talk about like value plays, and we'll talk about you know one of mine later. But that's how you that's how you win is you win by having the guys that no one else has, and you gain their points while no one else has them. It's not. It's not because you had Julio last week, right? Right. We all had Julio. So Yeah, and um, I, I'm by no means saying play him everywhere, play him in cash. I'm not that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying right. if you wanna if you wanna do some tournament lineups with him, I think it's an absolute good way to go. Um, and he allows you to play studs. Let's move to running back. Uh, Bobby, who who stands out for you th- this week among the running backs? What guy are you most excited to say? Put him in my lineup, let me get all those fantasy points. Well, there's uh, one guy. Um, um, he's 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 been pretty good so far in his career. Uh, he's, he's he's okay. I think you may have heard of him. His name is is Todd Gurley. Mm-hmm. He's pretty good um, football. It turns out. Yeah, he he's a good football player. And I and I'm breaking my rule. I'm breaking my rule. I, I'm I am paying up this week at running back because I think this is literally a, a, a potential like JV varsity. It's like it's like getting like uh, one of those. It's like playing college DFS at this point. It's like we we you saw Todd Gurley get 200 yards last week, mm-hmm. um, and I think three touchdowns. Like so, there is. It's almost a, if you get that type of production, there's almost no amount of price you can make him. I mean, I, I said last week. I said I'm not paying ten thousand dollars. I won't do it. 
turns out um that would have been just fine yeah so yeah he was so, he, he earned that and then like i was and that's kind of what we talked about is like did i really want to no but did it make sense and and in the matchup and the opportunity uh yeah yeah, it was definitely there. Like I'm looking at his stats. Like he he hasn't he hasn't scored less than 25.6 DK points all season long. Um, this is a guy that you know I talked about liking Jared Goff a little bit. Even if Goff has a big game, which was that Minnesota game when he Goff went crazy, uh, he still had 25.6 points. So like he has the ability to to even in a game where if you like Goff and you like the passing game to be really productive so uh, i'm i'm with you on Gurley at 9800 yeah and, and um i think the reason i i'm i'm liking him is is i'm also i'm pivoting to one of one of my one of my favorites and what i told you about last week is uh Tariq cohen is fifty one hundred dollars i think he's still less expensive than jordan jordan howard Fifty-three hundred, maybe. So, fifty-five hundred. Oh, 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 people, don't do it. Don't do it to yourselves. <laughs> Kareem Hunt last week. Who, who? This is. They are. They are replicating the Kansas City offense. Yeah. And Kareem Hunt last week uh, in that Sunday night game had like five catches for one hundred and one. I think a touchdown. I mean, he. If there's anyone who can emulate Kareem Hunt at all, I'm not saying they're the same player or have the same skill set at all. But there's anyone who can fill that void and that role that Kareem Hunt does for the Chiefs in that offense, it's Tariq Cohen with the Bears. So, look, at 5,100 against the Patriots who, uh, you know, just have a very poor defense at home. I think Cohen, um, at 5,100, I'm having him in all my lineups this week. And I think as the season gone on, it's shown that he's involved heavily, uh, whether it's running, passing, He's a guy that they game plan for every week to get the ball in their hands. So I love Cohen at 5,100. I like that call. Uh, I love Carlos Hyde at 4,700. Uh, had his worst game of the season a week ago, but the, it was a blowout. It got ugly quick. Baker Mayfield obviously stepped on the yard marker and kind of messed up his knee, and, and, and that offense just went to shit as soon as that happened. Um, this week, I expect them to have a get-right game. I think Tampa's defense is not good. Obviously, they fired their D.C. this week, so – they 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 agree with me. Um, I think this is a game where the where Baker's still a little. I'm not I, like I, I people are. I've seen some like kind of Baker excitement for this week, and obviously you could throw on Tampa, but I'm worried about that knee. I'm worried about kind of what this offense may looks like. And, you know, if Jameis and, and company they've looked really good. Um, I could see the the Browns kind of wanting. Okay, let's lean on Carlos a little bit this week. Uh, you know, he had 23, 22, and 17 carries before last week. I expect him to be around 20 carries once again. I expect him to be really productive. Um, and at $4,700, I'm going to have a hard time not putting him in my lineups. I, I do. Um, I agree there. And I think I think that's a good, in general, that's a good mat, good fantasy matchup for almost everyone involved. So, yes, I, I, I like Hyde there. Um, even going lower, though, is someone who... Uh, I, I talked about my running back rankings this week on fakepigskin.com. Is, um, and I, what I said about him, too, is I'm pretty sure that we should consider him or at least consider the idea that maybe he's a host from Westworld who escaped, which is Frank Gore. Cause oh, was, my God, Bobby. This is, this is, this is too much. You, you love – no, you, you lo- and you said you like the lines on the betting podcast. I'm, I'm, I do. And, and and which is fine, but you also mentioned something about the, their defense and like, oh, it's a it's a it's good, blah blah blah. Listen, the one thing that remains and, and shall shall remain and forever take behold this year is that Lions run defense mm-hmm. is atrocious. Yep. And Frank Frank Gore, you can't you can't bury this guy. Nope. He's the last three weeks he's averaged over five yards a carry. He's been their lead back. So that I, if if you're gonna beat the Lions, and you're in a game plan against the Lions, and you and Brock Osweiler's your quarterback, you're gonna hand the ball off. So I'm I'm, I'm looking at this going, hey, the, the Miami is gonna want to run the ball. They know the weakness of this team. At least I hope. I think Adam Gase is a good coach. Um, so they're they're gonna run the ball as much as possible. Frank Gore, 
3,800. My entire, every lineup I have is built around Todd Gurley, Tariq Cohen, and Frank Gore. Those Frank Gore was the next name on my list. I'm so excited we're on the same page. Oh. Oh. See, they're going to go, it, go it really doesn't well. doesn't Kenyon Drake is bad either. I like no. Kenyon Drake. I, I want Kenyon Drake to be a thing, but Frank Gore is getting the work. He's getting the volume. He looks good. He's, you know, like you mentioned, he is a host from Westworld. That is what he is, and he is, you know, going to be – I love him this week. It's scary that we're both on the same page. So, I, I think the, the you know the the four or five running backs we mentioned I think are are the way to look, um, and a great way to spend save your money. So, if we're saving money at running backs, that probably means we're spending up at wide receiver. Are you on the same page? Yes, sir. All right. Let me know where where are you spending your money. Well, I so I'm I, right now. I have. I have Thomas and Thielen. So, um, you know, both both very matchup proof guys. Um, the the Jets is a is a that they're they're not ranked well against the pass. So Thielen at this point, I mean, what price can really be high enough? I mean, he he just it, it it's not even like a hundred yards and touchdown. It's this guy's getting almost double digit catches every week. Yeah. So um, yeah, I I mean. Thielen, Thomas, the guys there, not you know, not 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 difficult. The, the, those would be my two guys if I spend at the top. Yeah, I'm I so there is a world where I'm building a GPP lineup with New Orleans guys with Michael Thomas, with Alvin Kamara, um, but sure. I I am I am not using Michael Thomas in cash this week, and maybe that's the detriment of me. I think the Ravens' defense is really really good, and obviously as you you heard in the podcast. If you listen to sports betting, I like Baltimore this week. I think they're they win this game. I think Drew Brees has a rough game. I think it's like a you know 175 yards, uh, maybe one touchdown game that Baltimore wins 23-13 something weird. Um, I think Michael Thomas has a bad game. I love 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 Adam Thielen and is absolutely worth every single penny of his 8600. I think he has a monster performance here once again. Um, you know, if I'm not looking there, I like, you know, I mentioned I like Jared Goff. I like the Rams receivers, and I think Robert Woods is probably my favorite. Obviously, you save 100 on Brandon Cooks. I think he's going to get the bulk of the volume this week. I think he's And Cup, Cup is ruled out. Yeah, Cup is officially out, so there is vol- volume to be had. Um, so, yeah, I think I love Robert Woods this week. Now, if we're going a little lower, is there is there someone you know sub seven thousand, maybe closer to six thousand that you're really interested in? Yeah, I think one guy that um, has, uh, you know, in, in the midst, I think of a of a breakout year, and, and I you know I don't like to, I don't like to pimp uh, my my hometown team because I, I hate their guts, but uh, Kenny Galladay, yeah, six thousand dollars and um, becoming. I mean, a really like just a regular like, I mean, you could even call him. He's allegedly the third receiver. You could call him the two receiver. In terms of targets and yards, you could call him possibly the the one A. I yeah. mean, he's he's that prevalent in that offense, and um, he has great numbers through through the through uh, their first five games. So um, let's in terms of targets, we're talking twelve, nine, seven, four, nine. So. He's just he's he's a huge guy. They look for him in the red zone. Uh, Stafford looks for him all the time downfield as a deep threat. I watch all these guys' games. Um, he's he's really involved. I think it's six thousand. Um, he's a great great value. Yeah, no, I I completely agree. Uh, two other names I want to throw out quickly: Alshon Jeffrey at sixty three hundred. This is a guy that has nine targets, eight targets, and twelve targets in his last three games since returning. Um, I also like Allen Robinson. You, you mentioned you like Mitchell Trubisky. I, I think, uh, you know, I think as long as Robinson plays, he's d- dealing with a little bit of a groin thing. I think he'll be fine. Um, I agree. I, 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 ex- I like him quite a bit at 6,000. I think there's a, a scenario where you take kind of a three or four of those $6,000 receivers, you know, and, and build a really, really nice, um, really nice roster. Um, now, if is there anyone? All the, all the bears, all the bears. All, all just put them all the bears in. Put all the bears in. Um, if you're looking, is there anyone you know low? Uh, if you're looking for a cheap option receiver, you really like? Well, I think I think I think now that we talk about Cub, I think 
Josh Reynolds makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think he's he's a bit of an obvious one. Um, uh, Damian Ratley is it for the Cleveland Browns? Um, he he came in and had I think almost double digit targets last week or maybe maybe double digit targets and had I think seven catches. So he's someone that um, I, I think if Rashad Higgins were to sit again, could have a, a big a big role against in a huge match in, in a great matchup, right? So. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's someone there I like, and um, you know, it, w- one of my one of my stacks that we will talk about later is uh, another bear, Anthony Miller. Yeah, uh, Miller's a guy I love. Come came in and and um, you know I loved him through the draft process. I think he makes a ton of sense. Obviously, I, m- I mentioned Kelvin Benjamin. I don't hate him. Um, I like Willie Sneed this week, and I th- you know I mentioned Joe Flacco. I'm in on him. Obviously, John Brown is a nice option. Uh, what is he? Fifty. Uh, are you gonna Are you gonna send me a picture with your Ravens jersey on on Sunday? I mean, yeah. this is yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have my face painted. It'll be glorious. This uh, is this is getting out of control. Between this, I mean, like, this is just yeah. the, the yeah, Ravens. I'm, I'm all in on Baltimore, which means it's gonna end in a, a fiery mess. But uh, I think I think Willie Snead is a guy who's ready to. To make a step, and and he's only four thousand. Like he is a great value. Um, he's had seven, seven, and ten targets the last three weeks. I think he has a monster game here against his former team, a team that kind of sent him on his way uh, mid-season last year with a with the injury bug and um, all all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, I, I like him. I like him quite a bit. If you're looking for a cheap option. Uh, let's talk tight ends. Is there uh, are are you spending up at anyone on at tight end? I don't think so. Um, I'm kind of punting this week. Um, I I'm focused on one guy, and I think I've I've kind of settled in on it. This is a guy I have also in a lot of season long leagues, and I just think is is having a having a, a breakout year. And uh, is is OJ Howard? I, I think if you've watched their games. Um, Athletically, he's far superior to anyone who's trying to guard him on the field. He's 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 just scratching the surface, and um, he played a little banged up last week and still was pretty productive with four or five catches and a touchdown. Uh, so I, I I just I I really like him. Uh, he's got a good matchup with Cleveland at home, and and he's he as soon as he came back in last week, they didn't even expect him to come back last week. Yeah. He was supposed to be out another another couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. He came back in right away was productive. Um, I just think he's the real deal. So I'm OJ Howard, 3,600. I love him. Uh, in that same game, uh, Joku, I think is 4,200. 4, yep. I think, I think he's a great value too, but um, it's tough for me to spend up this week with some of the higher guys. What, what are you thinking? Uh, so I love in Joku at 4,200. He's probably my favorite option at tight end. Uh, I okay. don't mind spending up at Zach, for Zach Ertz. I think, at 7,000, 7,100, he's absolutely worth what you have to spend to get him in your lineup. Uh, he's seen double-digit targets every single game except for last week when he saw nine. Um, you know, wow. he he's a guy that could put up over 100 yards, a guy that can score a touchdown or a few. I think Carolina is a funnel defense a little bit. Um, I think he can be thrown on, and I think Carson Wentz will look for him early and often. Uh, if not Ertz, if not Njoku, I do like Trey Burton this week at 4,300. Uh, we mentioned kind of how we like um, bears. the Bears. Uh, we're all in on the Bears. We saw what Travis Kelsey did. I think Trey Burton could do much of the same, kind of in your Tariq Cohen is Kareem Hunt. Um, I think at 4,300 is, is a good value. Um, and if you want to, if you want some stability at the position without, you know, going crazy in terms of cost, I think it's a good way to look. What do you make of? Um... What, what do you make of, in general, Greg Olson this week? Or, uh, I mean, I don't know. Like the 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 Eagles are good against tight ends. They don't get torched. Uh, Olson Olson is fine. Had seven targets a week ago. I I just like I'd rather spend the money on Njoku or Burton personally. But uh, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of trade offers for him in season long leagues too. Yeah. So. I know we're not talking about it here, but like I, people are like kind of like trying to trying to buy in on that Olsen train. I'm like, oh, yeah, I think it. they think they can buy low before he breaks out because I think he will be good kind of the rest of the way. 
Um, so he's going to be somebody I think I'm going to consider in future weeks. It's just with the matchups this week, Burton's matchup, uh, Njoku's matchup, I could save a couple hundred bucks. Uh, that's the way I'm looking. Yeah, I think that, I think Carolina Philly will be kind of an ugly game too. Mm-hmm. So, uh, let's talk defense. Is there a defense that stands out for you this week? No, I'm punting on everything, mm-hmm. um, and I'm I'm punting like I have I have the Jets in a couple lineups. Um, I have I had the Saints in a few lineups because they're so cheap, um, and I, and I think even I think. An interesting one is the Bears at 2,500. I just, I, you know, obviously, we all agree they're one of the best defenses in football. Uh, they're, they're, they're playing one of the best offenses. So you, you're like, oh, I don't want to play them, but you know, hey, like, this is when you, when you go strength on strength, you don't know what's gonna happen. Like, hey, maybe they, maybe they disrupt Bray a little bit. You know, it's not impossible, right? He's gotten disrupted before, so, you know, I. As a punt and play, I think the Bears are, are are fine. So no, I'm not I'm not too huge on defenses this week. What about you? Uh, so I like the Bears in GPP. I think that's an interesting way. I think not a lot of people will look that way, uh, especially after watching New England drop 40. I think this is a game that they could dominate, kind of like the Lions did against the Pats, where they allow maybe you know less two touchdowns or 17 points, something like that, um, and have a really good game and get a couple turnovers and. And Brady's just going to be sitting with his head and his hands on the sidelines. Um, the two defenses I'm looking at, and I know you're going to say I'm crazy for this one. Uh, yeah. I kind of like your Detroit Lions against the Brockett ship. <laughs> I kind of like Detroit Lions versus the Brockett ship. I could see an implosion. Um, and I, the one I kind of lean on a little bit more, at $2,300, the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I think okay. this is – I think. I don't, I don't. The Bills are uh, currently third in terms of sacks. the The Colts have only allowed ten all all season long. This is per Jared Smola of Draft Sharks. Uh, but if you look at it, they've never faced a defense that has that is ranked twelfth or better uh, in terms of getting sacks. So they're obviously um, a team that you know has done done um, well blo- blocking for luck. But luck's the guy who holds onto the ball a lot. I think the the Bills get pressure. I think Luck is the guy who can cause some turnovers. And I think at $2,300, $2, I, I love him. And I'm kind of – I'm with you in terms of I'm not spending at that position this week. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, um, I'm not with you on the Lions. I, best of luck, Godspeed. <laughs> um, but, uh, but you know, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I – I, yeah, I like um, I, I like the other call there. Um, you know, the, the defense in general is just something where like that's a that's a crapshoot like DK play in general to me. Yeah. It's just like yeah. why bother? Um, th- there are going to be some weeks where there's like an obvious choice, and you, we all want to do this, but like you know, it's like that's one of those positions. Just don't. It's almost like one of those positions. Just don't spend money. Yeah. So. Um, even even if you played, uh, what was the lowest one this week? I think it was it was it. Um, Let me look. Have it up. Hold on. Uh, it is the 49ers at 2,000. Right. There's even the four. Right. Right. So no. Right. Ridiculous. Right. Yeah. But it's like even if you, even if you need the 100 bucks, which you might not, like, just do it. It like the what's the the highest defense compared to the compared to lowest defense is not going to be that big of a deal. Yeah. And also the the what determines the highest defense is probably going to be some random touchdowns that it's impossible to predict. So yeah. Uh, I, I agree on punting this week. Now let me ask you uh, one thing really quick. We've seen sure. Jacksonville's defense uh, allow tw- 24 and 40 points in the past two weeks. Uh Obviously, both games were on the road. Now they're at home. Do you think Houston is a trap, or do you think Deshaun Watson, Will Fuller, and some of those pieces are interesting? Uh, no, I, 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 I'm giving Jacksonville the benefit of the doubt, and um, I'm, I, I, I don't, I, I, I don't like Watson. I, I don't like what I've seen from Tex, the Texans this year. In general, they, they've just been. Every week they've been really sloppy. Um, it seems like every time that they they that Watson has to drop back, there isn't really 
if there is a clean pocket, he still kind of jumps out of it and is always trying to just like, just, just you know, trying to make all these, you know, big plays on uh, big plays every time he drops back. And um, I just don't like what I'm seeing. No, they, they, I don't think they're a very good team. And I am going to give Jacksonville the benefit of the doubt. I think they get Fournette back this week and I think they get right. So, yeah. uh, so I, I'm, I'm not, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not, not, not too keen on the Texans. So if you're, I, I guess if you're not stacking the Texans, is there somebody that you're interested in stacking? Well, I, I, so I think some interesting ones, I, we talked, we talked about the bears. I, I think, I think the bears are interesting as, as, as a stack, obviously, mm-hmm. um, across the board. I, I think even, um, I think even just as a, as a kind of contrarian one, I think the Jets aren't that bad of a stack either. Um, yeah, I think you can throw on this Vikings defense, and if we assume that, you know, even you know, we kind of both think the Vikings win this game, um, that probably means Sam Darnold has to throw a little bit. And maybe it's, it's a, you know, a, a few late kind of deep shots, and hopefully you, you make it interesting. I, I guess if you're stacking Darnold with a wide receiver, who, who are you going at? Is it Robbie Anderson? Well, at this point, because it, it almost seems no one's healthy, it's Robert Anderson. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, Jermaine Curse would be would be another one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that was there, and I, and I also think like uh, this is gonna be a, this could be a popular one, but like the Cleveland stack could be could be profitable even on a cheap way though, right? Like it, for a for a cheap stack, I I think what I'm doing this week is I'm paying up with like Gurley, and I think you can you can afford. Um, I have Gurley, Thielen, Thomas, and I can afford some like Mitchell Trubisky to Anthony Miller stack, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Sam Darnold to Robbie Anderson, like that. I can afford that still. So, um, kind of going that way. So yeah, I, I, that, that, those are kind of what I'm looking at. How about you? Uh, obviously, I like Baltimore. I'm gonna be Captain Raven this week. Uh, Flacco and John Brown, Flacco and Willie Sneed, uh, Flacco and Hayden Hurst. Um, I obviously like the Rams. I like, you know, Jared Goff and Robert Woods, if it's a little, which is a little more pricey. Um, Jared Goff and, and Brandon Cooks, I think, is interesting. Um, it, out, outside of that, um, you know, Derek Anderson and Calvin Benjamin. Let's go. Wow. That is just <laughs> so special. I mean, ba- so basically, look, it's it's – it's me versus you, and it's the Bears versus the Ravens. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what this is. That's, I'm that's, so ready. I'm so here for it. I'm so here that, for it. That, that's all. That's all I can gather from 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 our last podcast. Was it's, it's it's the Bears versus the Ravens, and and may the best man win. Hopefully, we, we can both win. Yep. Uh, so let's before we get out of here, before we run for the hills, and uh, you know everybody tells us how crazy you are. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're uh, you know, it, it, please obviously subscribe, like the show, all that good stuff. But leave us in the, in the comments who are you who are you targeting? What's your favorite stack this week? Uh, you know, who who do we miss on all that good stuff? So let us know there. Uh, obviously on Twitter as well at Real Bobby Adcock at Notorious KRO. Uh, Bobby, before we get out of here, before we hit for the hills, before we enjoy uh, all that is week seven. Um, what's your lineup? Give it, give it, give the people what they came for. Give them, give them the, the Bobby Adcock lineup, uh, for week seven. Well, uh, before I, uh, before I come a millionaire, I'm going to let y'all know, um, let's just start running backs. Okay. The, the okay. two running back slots, Tariq Cohen at 51, Todd Gurley at 98. And let's just go to my flex, which is Frank Franklin Gore at 3,800. And then we'll go to receivers. Thielen at 86. Michael Thomas paying up there again at 79. My tight end, O.J. Howard, like I talked to you about at 36. The Jets defense. And then I finish it off with a nice, scrumptious stack of Trubisky and Anthony Miller. And that is – that's the lineup right there, man. Yeah. No, I, I think I, that feels good. Uh, I feel like that has uh, potential it's, to to do really well. And um, Trubisky uh, Miller greater than Flacco Sneed. Mm, 
I, I'm going to have to disagree with you there. You almost had me. You almost had me in, um, but no. Uh, so my lineup for the week uh, won the only Mr. Joe Flacco. Uh, my running backs are the ageless Frank Gore and Carlos Hyde. My receivers, John Brown for that Flacco John Brown stack. Uh, Alshon Jeffrey and Adam Thielen. Uh, my tight end is Zach Ertz, which I told you I might spend up in the, in this lineup. I am, and I think because I'm kind of able to spend, save money elsewhere, it, it works out. Uh, my flex is going to be Allen Robinson because I want a piece of that Bears offense, and my defense is going to be your Buffalo Bills. Uh, and yeah, I, there is your Millie Maker winner for Week Seven. Okay, I, I, I love it. Um, it's it's the bear it's the Bears versus the Ravens. Um, you know, and uh, we'll see. May, may may the best man win. And if look, if if I win the million, um, you know, I'll probably never talk to you again. But uh, yeah, that's if, fine. I, I, I would I would completely understand <laughs> that. Uh, but I'll just be here and uh, you know, crying into my uh, Ravens jersey with the purple tears running down my face. But somehow I'll strive and survive. Uh, and if I win, uh, I will get a purple helicopter and I will fly up and pay you a nice visit um, and drop uh, confetti and then do my Ray Lewis dance right in front of you. Yeah, just do that. Maybe maybe drop off like some some food or something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll I'll throw you something. But uh, all right, Bobby, this is a lot of fun. Uh, we hopefully you guys do well in DFS. Hopefully we do well in DFS. Uh, if you're interested in sports betting, make sure you go check out our sports betting podcast that. Bobby and I do each and every week. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. We're obviously on YouTube. Uh, so come check us out. Come hang out and let us know what you think. For The Real Bobby Adcock, I'm Kyle Robert, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Good luck, guys.